Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Um, as you know, with my D16Y8, I'm running a OBD1 P28 ECU made for D16Z6. Um, if you know anything about the two engines, they are fairly different. So running a P28 map isn't the most efficient and optimal map for the D16Y8. The most optimal and best map to run is, or best ECU to run, would be the P2P ECU for OBD2. However, to convert from OBD0 to OBD2, you're gonna have to wire up a whole bunch of different sensors, like a secondary O2 on top of a primary four wire O2, and then also a knock sensor, and I guess a crank position sensor, and I think as well as an EVAP system, because the OBD2 ECU might check all that stuff. It's a lot more headache to do, and you know, you're very limited with OBD2 ECU. However, going to OBD1, you're able to chip and modify that ECU and tune it for your engine. So it's a lot more versatile. Although I'm running it stock, it's not running it optimal. And on forums, people talk about it sometimes running lean, sometimes running rich. I've experienced probably a little bit more running rich because my exhaust tip gets black fairly quickly after I wash it out from the inside. And then one drive and it's all black again. So that indicates that it possibly can be running a little rich. I don't really know. So, my friend Germs, shout out to my friend Germs by the way, he gave me this. So, he gave me a narrowband um, air fuel gauge. Um, this is going to tell me if I'm running lean, or if I'm running rich, or if I'm in the middle that's running okay. I've printed, 3D printed a um, cover for this so that I could basically, it's a kind of like a gauge bot I guess. I could stick it somewhere on my car and if I don't like it later, I could just rip it off and just detach everything. So, I'm going to... Wire, show you guys how to wire this up today and we're going to make it fully detachable so if I ever wanted to take it out in the future, I can. Um, so let's just get to work and I'll show you guys uh, how to wire up a narrowband. By the way, if you guys are using something like this for tuning, this is not the gauge to get. You will need a wideband O2 sensor as well as a wideband gauge and obviously your chipped ECU. So in this video, we're not talking about tuning or anything. We're only trying to get some visibility of if we're running rich or if we're running lean. And this gauge will actually tell us that. So just an FYI. So let's get to work. All right, so before we even get started, as you can see, these wires are a little short because you know it's a used gauge. It's been used, I don't know how many times, but Jim's had it lie around and he gave it to me. Um, so first thing we're going to do is extend these wires. But before we do that, I'll go over what the wiring is. Essentially, your red wire is going to be switched ignition on. Black wire is ground. And this is your O2 sensor signal wire. So with a narrow band, which is what's in our cars, you're going to basically wire this to the signal wire on the um, ECU side. So for, I think, the OBD1, this would be pin D14. So before we do any of that, I'm just going to extend all these wires. Then we're going to get, our, get around to wiring it. All right, as you can see, I'm heating up my soldering iron because we're going to strip some of these wires out and then we're going to extend them with the wire, some wires that I have. Um, and we're going to heat shrink it yeah, with the solder. So let's just get to stripping all this. Um, since it looks really frail, I'm just going to cut this tip off. So I tried to match up the colors as good as I can. So black with black and red with red and purple with purple. are all extended now we're going to go inside the car and we're going to find the areas we're going to need to pin this to all right to start things off you're going to need to find where your ecu is which is located behind your passenger floor mat area okay. 
So it's going to be held down by some of these clips and stuff. So you can easily just pop this off. And as you can see, the AC is right behind here. You're gonna to need to remove a couple bolts. I think um, some 10 millimeter bolts and that should free up the ECU. All right, so now that we're open, so there's two 10 millimeter bolts here and two up top. So I'm just gonna gun those off. And then the plate comes off. All right, here's the ECU. So connector D is this last one here. So D14 will be this white wire right here because it'll be a different color if you're um, running a stock wiring harness, but this is obviously a OBD0 to OBD1 uh, connector. So it's this wire here. It will also lead into a connector that goes out to your engine bay. So these are part of the wires that you have to wire for your four wire O2 sensor. So you just basically count from the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is 14, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 14 will be on the bottom uh, row, uh, seven from the left on this last connector. So it's A, B, and D connector. All right, guys. So what I've done is I've taken a, a pin here. That's from my distributor, I think. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to poke it into this wire here because this is the wire from the ECU that goes out to my engine bay to my O2 sensor. So by pinning it here and I'm going to tape it up with some electrical tape, it holds it there and I could actually detach it whenever I want to. So I'm just going to do that real quick before I wire this to the harness or the, the gauge just to show you guys. All right, so just like that, it's pinned in there, not going anywhere. There's not enough movement or pulling for this to even detach. Um, so all I'm gonna do is just wrap this up with some electrical tape to prevent it from shorting anywhere. And this is in. So I'm gonna wire this to the purple wire and that makes it fully detachable. So if I ever wanted to remove the gauge, I'm not really tapping into any of the wires, ruining the wires and all. So I just have to yank this out like that and I pull the gauge out, simple. All right, so now for the 12 volt switch, you can use any of these kind of pins here um, on the fuse box, these ones. So what I've done is I've crimped this on here so that we could just easily plug it into one of these slots. So just check which one is a 12 volt switch. There's gonna be like a few here. I've already used one for power windows. There's a couple up there as well. So um, just gotta figure out which one it is. All right, so I mounted the gauge here. I even uh, braided the the wiring to make it look a little bit nicer in case I want to just leave it there for for a while so everything is set up now let's just test it to make sure that it turns on yeah it does uh, I think we need to fire up the car just to check it out and stuff but let's just try it out just stays in the rich so I, I oh it's starting to do something yeah so it's, it is working it's starting to do something so we'll warm up the car and uh, then maybe we'll go for a drive and see how it looks all right so at idle it looks like it's running hella lean um, Which is something I expected because it does run a little weird at the when it's starting up and at idle. But once it's warmed up, it usually goes a little bit better. So this definitely needs some sort of a tune. Yeah, definitely running a lot leaner than it's supposed to be. As you can see, it's like very, very like lean. But as it's warming up, it's starting to go all like over the place. So the map is obviously you can tell that the map is not perfect. So we'll warm it up and then as we drive, we'll determine if this is um, running okay or not. So it really should be in the yellow zone for the most part. But uh, as you can see, all the values are going all over the place.
seconds. After you pass about 3,000 RPM, um, it started to run like pretty much stoic. Uh, but anything under 3,000 RPM, you're really running lean and it's all over the map. So as soon as I release the throttle, usually it goes down to like lean. Um, so as you can see, the tune for this car, at least the base map, is not the right base map. It, Alright, so as we're driving right now, I'm above 3,000 RPM, I'm around 4 grand right now, um, and the car is mostly stoic, so it's actually running fine. Uh, but anything below 3,000 RPM, uh, I notice that it's running quite lean, and um, if I release the throttle, it'll hit the lean as well. So, like, really the tune for a P28, it really needs some adjustments up between... Um, you know, zero to 3,000 RPM because it's it's just very lean, especially at startup. There you go guys, we finished installing the narrowband air field gauge and it works, we took it for a spin and we realized that it actually does run lean a lot, which is the most common thing that comes up when you are searching a Y8 P28 ECU. Um, so people that said it runs lean a lot is correct. Uh, and if it's running lean all the time, it's not really good for the engine. It actually could cause it to detonate. So I'm probably going to chip my ECU and burn somewhat of a Y8 base map on it. You're still going to have to start off with a Z6 base map and then you're going to just tune for the differences. So what I'm going to do is probably go through some steps and make myself a map and burn it and then, you know, put it into the car and see how it runs. But that's probably something in the future for now. I'm still going to be driving it as is. It's not good for the engine. So if you guys invested a lot of money into your engine uh, and you have a Y8 and you know, you're driving it on a stock ECU, I highly don't recommend it uh, because just seeing from the gauge, it's lean a lot. Um, and I don't think that's safe for the engine, uh, which is probably why I'm experiencing some issues with like oil burn and all that stuff as well. I don't know if it's correlated or not, but it's possible uh, because the P28 map isn't right for the Y8 engine. Uh, you really need to run the P2P map, but there's no way to get a P2P map onto a OBD1 P28 anyways. Uh, you're gonna really start off with a Z6 P28 map, and then you're gonna tune for any differences, essentially. Anyways guys, I uh, hope this helps you guys out. If you haven't already, please comment, like, and subscribe, and share my videos. As always guys, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.